It's Christmas! We've teamed up with Tesco to bring you some delicious and simple festive food ideas. From seasonal party food to how to cook a full-blown Christmas dinner, desserts, and even what to do with your leftovers. All of which will get your Christmas sorted. Welcome to our Christmas dinner cook along. We're going to take you step by step through the entire process, making it really simple so you can cook along with us. Now, whenever we near the end of a step, we're going to stick this icon up to prompt you to pause the video so that you're able to finish the step that you're on in your own time so that we can all move on together. Before you start though, a few things to do. One, get all your ingredients to hand, including the turkey, which you'll need to take out of the fridge a couple of hours before you need it. Just keep it covered in cling film in the kitchen. And secondly, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, we're good to go. So we're four hours away from the best Christmas lunch ever, which means we need to start with the turkey. Number one, get the best turkey you can. We've got a finest British bronze, free range turkey. It's about four kilos. Um, what we need to do first is take everything out from the inside. Mm. So when you buy it, it often has a bag of giblets or a turkey neck still in it. Yep. Okay, so without untrussing the whole thing, uh, taking the rubber band off, you kind of want to take those out and instead put in flavor. So we're going with the Christmas flavour of a clementine, two of them, and we're going to stud those with cloves and put them back into the cavity, along with fresh herbs, thyme, sage and rosemary. With those flavours inside, as it roasts, it will kind of infuse loads of flavour, but now we're going to rub the whole bird with softened, well-seasoned butter. So salt, pepper, soften butter, just do it in the microwave for a few seconds, rub it all over the breast, the legs and the wings. Then chop up leek, carrot and onion, really chunky, place it in the base of a large roasting tin with a splash of water. You can see the veg is really chunky. That's sometimes called a trivet, and what it's going to do is form a bed for our turkey. Mm -hmm. It does a couple of things. It keeps the turkey off of the direct heat of the tray. Yep. With all the water, it helps steam it, because we're going to cook it in a tent of tin foil, and it's all flavour, which you can use later on in the base of a gravy if you're making it. And now for the turkey. Yeah, this bit I think is fantastic. If I had one criticism over turkey, it would be, it would be that sometimes the breast is a little bit dry. However, flip it upside down, and therefore, the juices from the turkey, as it cooks, trickle down into the breast, keeping it really juicy, so it's sort of self-based. Amazing tip, didn't know about that before today. But it's well worth doing. Cover it in tin foil, and then it needs 90 minutes for a turkey this size, in the oven at 180 degrees, but we'll take it out half an hour before it's finished cooking, uh, and then turn it back over and baste it so it looks golden and perfect too. The great thing about this cook along is the whole thing can be done in a single oven in just four hours and on your own. Obviously today I'm fortunate enough to have the help of these three. So while the turkey's in there for an hour and a half, you're done for the moment and we can move on to stuffing. Now correct me if I'm wrong Ben, but stuffing is called stuffing because you stuff it inside the bird and cook it. Usually, however, with a turkey at Christmas, it's such a big bird, if you put so much stuffing in, especially if it's meat, in order to cook all the way through the middle, you're likely to overcook the turkey. Aha! Uh -huh. So we're going to do the stuffing separately, make it into little balls to keep them really perfectly cooked, the turkey will be fine. Making it, very simple, just add minced pork, a couple of rashers of smoky bacon, chopped up, into a bowl, and then add diced onion, the zest of an orange, some dried cranberries, fresh thyme and egg yolk, and then we mix the whole thing together with dried bread crumbs. Okay, that sounds good. Mix it all together and then we're going to roll it into kind of golf ball sized pieces so that once they cook, later on they shrink a bit yep. and they end up the size of a walnut. Very relevant for Christmas as well, golf balls, because it's what you always buy your uncle. <laughs> yeah, and, and nuts. Now we've lined the stuffing up on a baking tray with a sheet of baking paper so they don't stick. They can't go in the oven just yet because the turkey's in there. So we need to put them in the fridge until later on. But now we can move on to some veg. Can we ask a question? Oh, yep. Yeah. You've got a pot of cranberry sauce there. What are you going to do with it? That is going to become our glaze. Oh. oh. So later on, once they're cooked, we'll let this down with some hot water, brush it over the stuffing balls and it gives them that brilliant gloss and sweetness just as they finish. You thought we'd mucked up? Yes, a little bit, yeah. Right, that's it. I'm out then. <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie to you, Ben, that turkey smells and looks amazing. How are these veg going to compete? 
Uh, well, the, the three different coloured, very seasonal veg, and we're going to spice them up with some cumin and some honey as we roast them. Okay, and the great thing is, if you're juggling ovens and hob space, then these veg you can prep way ahead and they don't spoil. So, I'm a bad juggler. Good. Peel carrots, parsnips, and beetroot. Cut the carrots and parsnips into finger length pieces and cut the beetroot into segments, about eight from each beetroot. Can we cook these on the same tray? You could put the parsnips and the carrots together if you wanted. Keep the beetroot separate because raw beetroot will take about 10 minutes more to cook mm -hmm. and the colour might leak out. But for now, we can put them on the side. We'll cook them later on when the oven is free and they'll need a squeeze of honey just before oh, they're finished yes. cooking. Too early, it will caramelise and burn. Okay, but now these can go on the side and we can move on to our twist on pigs in blankets. Oh. Miss Figgy, you're up. <laughs> I'm guessing Barry meant Miss Piggy, not Miss Figgy, because Miss Figgy's not a thing. No, well, that's the thing, this is our twist. Oh. I figured since we've got enough pork going on <laughs> in our stuffing, that we'd use dried figs, oh. which is nice and sweet. So half of one of those, wrapped up in a rasher of unsmoked streaky bacon, which is salty, lay them on a tray, and then later on, just before we sit down to eat, we'll cook them under the grill, brush with a little bit of finest maple syrup and butter, and they are amazing to go with our stuffing balls, turkey, and all the other trimmings. I'm not going to lie, I'm intrigued and I'm willing to give it a go. Good. Cut and wrap them. Okay. And now it's time for the best part of the dinner, it's the roast potatoes. And I'm not going to fluff this up. Well, you kind of are because no that's face. what makes an amazing potato. Oh. So we're going to peel these and place them into cold salted water, then heat the pan up to the boil. Let it simmer for eight or 10 minutes till they're just cooked and then drain into a colander and then we're gonna shake them and that's what makes them fluffy. And it's those fluffy bits that will go crispy in the oven and now it's time to add some flavor. So we're going to go crispy because of the beef dripping but we've also added in rosemary, thyme and garlic. We add the potatoes into that, season it well with salt and pepper and like everything else, it's another tray all prepped, ready to go in the oven when the turkey comes out. Oh, incredible. Time check, chef. Well, we've been in the kitchen for about an hour and 50 minutes. The turkey has been in the oven for 90 of those. Pretty much cooked, but it's a little bit anemic. So at this point, we're gonna flip it back up the right way and we're gonna brush it with a sticky maple glaze. That's half maple syrup and half melted butter. Then it goes back into the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for another 30 minutes. Keep returning back and brushing it every 10 minutes or so. And in between the brushing and basting, you've got time to shred some sprouts. So get some sultanas, walnuts ready, your shredded sprouts, and we'll use that for a veg dish later on. Look oh, man. at that. That is a bird. Not only does it look great, but it smells amazing too. You have to trust us on that. And that's what the maple glaze does. It looks, it's taste, it smells, it's everything. We've been basting it for about half an hour. We've also now shredded all of our sprouts, but I think we're winning because that's the bit that everyone's scared of. Absolutely, that's it's done. done. All we need to do, tent it over to keep it warm with some tin foil, and then insulate it with a couple of tea towels. And you can keep that in the kitchen for 90 minutes, just on the sideboard. It will stay plenty hot enough and it'll be perfect to carve later on. What that also means is you've now got an oven free for 90 minutes or so to cook all of that. So first up, potatoes and beetroot. They're going into the oven, which is now at 200 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. And you've got time to kill. Now get a waft of those. Oh, they Spuds smell good. and beetroot are now cooked and finished. They're pretty hardy veg, so we're going to take them out, we're going to let them cool down, it's not a problem, we'll reheat them later on. Next up though, the same oven, the same temperature, we're going in with parsnips and carrots. They need 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, we're going to squeeze some honey over them, toss them again and put them back in for another 10. And that same 10 minutes, we also add in the stuffing balls. Simple as that. At this point, what we've done is transferred all of the roast potatoes into a serving dish. We've mixed all three roasted roots together and put those into a second serving dish. And our stuffing balls, they're now cooked, but now for that glazed bit. 
the cranberry glaze, we just dab onto the balls like that. Then all three of those go into the oven, which we're now going to switch right down to about 90 or 100 degrees Celsius. That's enough to keep everything warm without overcooking them. And that will give us 15 minutes to concentrate on the rest. Very simple. Our figs in blankets go under a grill with a bit of maple glaze. And we can concentrate on the green veg. Doing it last minute means it stays super vibrant and fresh. I am not a sprout fan, Ben. Not everybody is. Personally, I love them. But what if I told you this was more like cabbage? You'd be lying. By shredding up the Brussels sprouts, they kind of take on more of a cabbage flavour. Okay. People don't like the intense flavour of the inside of a sprout. Yep. This way, we sauté them in butter. They become really rich. Salt and pepper. Toss them together for three or four minutes and then add in sultanas and walnuts. You get a bit of sweetness, you get a bit of bitter crunch, okay. plenty of black pepper. It's a bit different. It'll be a talking point at the table and they are delicious. And at the same time, on the same hob, in different pans, we're going to cook the peas. So melt the butter and chicken stock in a pan with lemon juice, rosemary and a clove of garlic. Then add in the peas. Because they're defrosted, they only need a couple of minutes just to warm through. And then we finish them with freshly shredded mint. Because it's Christmas, it's Christmas. we all need a sprig of mint. Right, just as we're plating everything up, it's worth remembering that every good Christmas dinner needs some good sauces. Now you can make your own using the turkey neck, the giblets and veg, or we're using finest turkey gravy and traditionally made cranberry sauce. And there we go, if you've been following along, it should be super simple. One oven, four hours, let's get the stuff plated. First, the big reveal of the turkey. Look at that. That Hello. is oh. a bird. Come on, to the table. Woohoo! Let's go. Oh, after you. See you, Ben. But well, we did it. See, how easy was that? If you want the full written recipe and time plan, then click on the link below. And do subscribe if you are, because look what you're missing out on. But most of all, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas.